What's up everyone? Now it's time to learn the clone effect. And this one is super powerful. You can see some examples here. I use this one in the Samsung edit as well as the OnePlus edit. And this one is actually pretty simple. You just need a shot from a tripod. Don't move the camera at all. And then you have either yourself or a talent perform in different positions uh, inside the frame. And those ones we just kind of mask out and then overlay. And that way we can create such a cool effect, the clone effect. So I would say let's jump right in all right in after effects here is my clip we literally just placed the camera on a tripod with a super wide lens we have the 10 mil lower lens here and yeah i just wanted to have that extra space to get really close and also far away to show the wide lens of the samsung flip so that is the clip i just the, the camera just kept rolling and I did some stupid things and moved around and then I moved out of the frame so I also had a clean plate which I could use and that's literally all I did. At the end I walked towards the camera and then grabbed the camera and placed it literally just on the floor. I walked out of the frame and jumped back in. Uh, so this was exactly again the same position because I placed it on the floor. I could match cut it here to the jump I like. And I think the first one was even the best one. Now I think the second one, but that that's for a different tutorial. Um, now we are focusing here on the clone. So here's my clip. First of all, I'm going to drag it here onto the new comp icon. This way, as you know, this way we create a composition with the same size and frame rate as our original clip. Perfect. So now um, I'm going to drag this clip here again onto the comp icon to create our main comp. Nice. And now here in the main comp, we now have our pre comped layer. Perfect. So now the first thing I want to do is to select the parts I want to use in a video. So I want to use this jump because I've, I like this jump. And when you shoot outside here, always have someone to bounce the light back on you. Just, just, oh, guys, if you bounce the light in natural light um, with the sun bounce, it's just going to enhance the quality of your shots like crazy. Believe me, guys, this is like a 20 bucks invest, but your, your footage is going to look super sick if you use it right but it's not too hard and there are plenty of cool tutorials out there but that's just a quick tip use a bounce outside you can see it here here i have the the, the lighting here from the bounce in my face here it's not compare that here bounce no bounce bounce no bounce huge difference all right so i'm going to use i think different variations of the jump so i jumped a lot of times I think this jump was cool. So let's use this one. Let's just jump into the air, boom, just like that. Perfect. So this is going to be the jump. So I renamed this one quickly to jump and I can delete the other ones. This one and this one. I don't need those, bring them in closer. So now I'm selecting the next part. I think this one is cool where I point at the building. So I'm going to cut this part as well to the duration I want just like that oh the second one might be even better because i'm looking at it as well so let's use the second one i cut this one as well so here just name this one um right number one right because i probably have a second one on the right as well here i do in the handstand i didn't practice this one um i skipped skipped the gym for a little bit you know not gonna lie but now i'm back on track so you guys should go to the gym as well and jump back. So here we cut it. So this is going to be our handstand layer. And then we have this one here pointing at it. I think this one looks cool. So we're going to trim this one as well. Just like that. Cool. This guy is doing weird poses on the left. So we call this one number one left. And here is a clean plate. So I'm just going to trim this one. So we have people moving in the back, perfect. So this is going to be our clean plate, nice. And here we have me coming in just like that. And I'm going to grab the camera and place it on the floor. Camera grab, nice. So um, do we need anything here from, you see here, no light. And then with the bounce, like, this looks so much better. Look at that. This is literally 20 bucks. So get one now you could just shoot outside and get professional lighting this way but we can recommend you we're going to add some in the description so you know what to get cool so here this one is left number two so now 
I select all the layers and now I can just bring them all in here. And the next step is going to be to isolate each layer so we can stack them on top. So you can see here the uh, the clouds don't really change because there are no clouds, but usually when you shoot one shot for like 20 minutes and it's cloudy, you have some movement in the cloud. So this way you can make a clean plate and place this one actually all the way on the back and just freeze one frame. Um, So you don't have the clouds moving. Uh, here we are lucky we have beautiful day uh, with blue sky. We just have to mask and rotoscope all of the parts. So um, let me start with maybe this one here. So one way to do it is to select the uh, pen tool up here to the top, select your layer, then the pen tool, just like that. Here we go. And then we draw a shitty mask around me. This is one way to do it, but this might not work uh, for all the shots because one of those clips is I'm, I'm moving like right behind me. So now with the mask, you see the problem here, it cuts off myself. So if you have enough distance between all of the um, all of the clones in your shot, you can do it just like that super fast and simple with the mask tool. But if it's a little bit more, um, yeah, together, if, if, you're, if your clones are really close and next to each other, you might need to rotoscope it. So choose the roto brush tool, select your clip, boom, draw a selection around your subject um, you want to clone. And I would also recommend you to select the shadow as well, because this one is really, really important. If you have shadows in your frame, select those as well. Here, perfect. Now we have me selected. You can deselect with holding down option and you can make the selection tool bigger or smaller with holding down command. If you're happy with your selection, just press space bar and now it's going to create the mask. And while it's creating the mask, you can actually deselect and select areas and you can correct it. And Rotoscope 3.0 should make a good job. And this is not a complex shot, so it should run through pretty smooth, pretty fast. So let's see what After Effects did. And since we have a clean plate in the background, it doesn't have to be like 200% correct, right? Um, so I think with the first selection here, we are good. We can always jump back and adjust uh, certain sections if needed. For example, here we had some jitter here going on and here, look at that, like this is jittering as hell. We need to see if that's a problem or if we can just go with it. But for now, I think we're good. So now I just clicked freeze frame to freeze the selection we just did. So now we have to repeat this step with every shot. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, I guess. Let's jump back in the main comp and now you can see, boom, just like that, we have now combined those two shots, but here you can already see, damn Keanu. What is that? That doesn't look good, right? That is good that it happened because now I'm selecting the tool again, double click on it and now unfreeze it. And now I can again make changes to it as soon as the roto brush finished loading. So here we need, that's me, roto brush. What, I, what the heck are you doing, man? Like it keeps selecting my shirt. We don't want that. So here at the beginning, we need to make sure the rotoscope is clean, so I'm going to quickly fix that. All right, so I just fixed it and let's jump back into our main composition. Maybe we're going to drop, drop the resolution to half. So this way we can see if everything works. So let's go. We have me selected and now it shouldn't be a problem. Even with the handstand, I could walk behind me like here and it's not going to cover my handstand. So we would jump to the next one, which is the handstand and we're going to rotoscope me again. So here we need to switch the resolution to full again. So let's jump to the handstand, make sure we have a clean selection. This might be a little bit more we have to select and to change because this is quite complex here with my feet going all through the air. So let's make sure we have a good selection here. Boom, boom, boom. This is all about the details again. We try to make it as clean as possible here because with a cleaner result, it's going to look cleaner, right? I really want to get these shadows selected as well because the shadows really make the difference. Uh, I just roughly draw around them. Let's go. Making the handstand. That looks good. Ooh, and up, 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 up. Didn't make it. So yes, that looks good. All right, and I think we just have to fix a little bit of the shadows here to make it 100% clean. 
So I'm quickly going to do that. And then we can freeze it again and jump to the next one. Perfect, so it's done. And now we have the first shot in here as well. Let's go, nice. You can see here, this is the third one here in the back. But now we can see this one um, should be covered by the handstand or should not be covered by the hands. So now you can see this one has the wrong order because the handstand should be behind me pointing to the left, right? So now we are going to move this right one here up to the top, just like that. And then we have to rotoscope this one again as well. So it's all about now making all of the rotoscopes and isolating each layer. So let me quickly isolate this one as well. All right, so this is a pretty short clip. So After Effects rush through this one pretty quick. So let's freeze those 70 frames as well. And guys, we're getting there. And let's jump back into the main comp. And now we can see here, perfect. Now we are overlapping this one here. So this totally makes sense. Now we can actually jump into the next one, which is uh, the one here at the back where I'm jumping. Here, we maybe don't even need um, to cut me out because I'm here on the back anyway. And here, this is the left one, the second left one. I don't even think we need the left one here. So let's not mess this one out anyway, because I like the one here closer to the camera better. So I'm deleting the left one here. And I'm also going just with a rough mask here around that clip, because this one is sitting all the way at the back. You can also solo layers here, which can really help. Um, but I want to get rid of uh, my DOP here. So I'm just drawing a rough mask, making sure that my shadow is also covered in the mask, just like that. Perfect. And now since we have a clean plate at the back of our clip, this one here, that's why it's so important to have that clean plate. You see, um, this way now we have a background because otherwise we wouldn't have that at the back. It would look something like that because we isolated every single layer, either with rotoscoping or with masking. So now you can see here all the layers, all the clones are here. What's up guys? And now we're adding the clean plate here at the back. So everything comes together and we have all our clones here in the shot. Nice. There's just one missing um, where I come in and grab the camera. So let's quickly just rotoscope this one as well so I can show you how I come in here and grab the camera. So here we do and choose the rotoscope tool again and we are going to draw the selection around me quick, quick, quick and dirty. So in the, in the purpose of this video, I'm going to go through this really quick so I don't want to waste your time, guys. I want to give you value, you know, give you some value here. So I think you get the idea. The shadow needs to be rotoscoped as well, as you know. So let me quickly make the selection here, just like that. Now we press base bar. And this one actually got tracked really well. We just could do more here with the, uh, with the shadow. And now with all of the single clones isolated, we can now create, yeah, any effect we want. So there's so much you can do. You can make them pop in one at a time and then make them disappear. You can scale them up. You can make them actually come maybe from the sky, <laughs> landing uh, in your frame or whatever you want. Like now it's your creativity. Now you can make so many cool effects with that. So let's say we want to make everyone just appear um, at the time. So maybe the jump comes first, then the handstand, then the right one. So the right guy here, just like that. Boom. That's the effect I used for the Samsung video where everyone is appearing at once. Da, 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 on the beat. Do, 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 do. This can be super, super cool. Like this is a cool effect. You can make them um, scale up. You can um, edit the opacity, uh, whatever you want. So this is how you create the clone effect. And now with that main comp, what I actually did to just add more of a realism, created a new composition. Like that, that's main comp number two. <laughs> it's like the renders. Final, final, V3. Final, final, V7. Now this is our clip here. And with everything in one composition, we could now add a camera shake, for example, to just really sell the effect. So now with the camera effect applied, everything has a shake, which adds more realism to it. 
and here I'm using the Red Giant plugin. You can use whatever camera uh, shake you have. You can add camera shakes um, like just for a few seconds, like an effect when he drops or, or one of the clones appears, like boom, supporting this impact. And this way here, we can just make it look more realistic, the clone effect. And you can also add scale keyframes. I really like to zoom in here. So we, this one was really wide. So we could have started far in and then zoom out to let's say 120 or something like that. And this way you can now animate the camera movement. You can change um, the position in the frame. So it just adds, it just makes everything feel like more composed. So let's turn off the camera grab for a second so we can really see what we're doing here. So this way you can now edit all of the shots. So I would really suggest you to like here to play around with all sorts of zooms of camera shakes to just make everything better composed together. So. This is the clone effect. Now, what I did here was I actually took screenshots of the UI of the phone um, and actually placed the UI above it. And that way it looked like it's shot with uh, the actual phone. So that's it for the clone effect. And I actually can't wait to see what you guys are going to create with it. That is the basic technique. And now I want to encourage you to get creative with it, to make your clones appear, to add more effects to the clones, to really spice this up and make this your effect, your style to tell your story. And guys, I would really appreciate if you could drop a like, if you could subscribe to the channel, because this really makes this video so we can create more of those YouTube tutorials. So guys, I hope you've learned a lot and I can't wait to see you in the next one.